Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 John. 2 John, verse 8. Book of 2 John, verse 8. The title of the message is Things That You Can Lose. Things That You Can Lose. Things That You Can Lose. 2 John, verse 8. 2 John, verse 8. The Bible says, Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Brother Kelvin, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray, Lord, just thank you for another day that we get to come here preach. Uh, listen to the preaching and uh, be changed into a better Christian, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for dispensationalism. Lord, I thank you for um, that we get to pray directly to you and not through some pope. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for answering our prayer, Lord. Yes, and help Amen. us to never give up on our family members and continue to pray for their salvation, yes. Lord. Amen. Help us to always Amen. be ready to preach the gospel yes. in instant, in season, and out of the season. In any given moment, Lord. And out, out of a right heart, uh, that is for the love of the lost souls out there, Amen. Lord. Amen. Lord, at this moment, I just pray that please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes, Give him the word that you want us to hear, Lord. Yes. Speak through him. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And give them the liberty and the freedom to preach the truth today, Lord. Help us to be convicted in the heart and help Amen. us to change from the inside out. Yes. And I uh, just pray that you help us to understand your words today, Lord. Please keep us safe. And uh, keep us healthy spiritually and physically. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Things that you can lose. There are many things that a person can lose, whether you're saved or unsaved. But as an unsaved person, you can lose everything, including your own soul. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Mark. Book of Mark. Before we get into what Christians can lose, let's look at what an unsaved person can lose. Book of Mark, chapter 8. Mark, chapter 8, verse 36. Mark, chapter 8, verse 36. The Bible says in Mark, chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Verse 37, For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? A person can lose their soul for all eternity in hell if you do not trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are made up of body, soul, and spirit. Your body turns to dust. Your soul goes back up. I mean, your spirit goes back up, but your soul, which is eternal, will spend eternity in heaven forever or will burn in hell forever. And if you do not trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this whole world will profit nothing. You could have every, every penny in the whole world. You could have every mansion in the whole world. You could have all the cars in the world. You could have all the gadgets in the world. If you could own all the TV stations, you could own like, you know, all the social media platforms. You could have 100 million followers. You could have billion followers, right? But if you're not saved, what shall it profit you? It's going to all disappear. Amen. You can't take that with you no, to eternity. Right. That's why number one thing is that you can lose your soul for all eternity in the lake of fire forever yes. if you do not trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Thus, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a dilemma. You have two choices. You could try to profit from all the things in the world and lose your soul for all eternity or trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell Believing that Jesus is God who died for your sin, shedding his precious blood, and repenting heart, you just have to trust him as your Lord and Savior. Then the Bible says you have eternal life. That's how souls got saved in our street preaching. 
They didn't have to study the whole Bible. They didn't have to attend church. They didn't have to recite rosary. They didn't have to, you know, start thinking and giving money to the poor. No. Amen. They just realized that they were sinners on their way to hell, believed that Jesus is God who died for their sins, and willing to turn from their ways and turn to God and trust that Christ as their Lord and Savior. Simple as that. Yes. And within a few minutes. Not within a few years, Amen. not within life's time as some religions teach. I mean, isn't that ridiculous? Yes. you got to find your way throughout your life. What if I die in between? Yeah. Right? And then I don't know what's going to happen to me. Those are all false religions. But the Word of God says you could know for sure, Amen. and you trust Christ by faith only, and you have eternal life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And you can never lose it. Man, Amen. that's the greatest, greatest assurance, greatest, greatest blessing Amen. that you don't ever have to worry about losing your salvation. You don't have to worry about your soul burning in hell because you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. How foolish is it for anybody in this world to reject that free gift? I mean, people love free stuff. We talk about it all the time. If you come to our church, we're going to give you a million dollars every Sunday. People are going to tent out like a week before. You know, they'll just make a living over there, you know. And we'll have a bunch of trash everywhere, you know. However, if we tell them you have eternity, you have free gift of life for all eternity, that can't be measured with billions and trillions of dollars. By trusting Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you don't have to do anything, man, you hear cricket many times. Yes. People say, man, I can't accept that. I mean, you're willing to accept free million dollars, but you don't want to accept free gazillion dollars, you know, compared to eternity yes. in heaven. Right. See, people's mind is just messed up, and they're damaged by things of the world, they're damaged by educational system, they're damaged by society, yes. they're damaged especially by their parents. Yes. You know? If your child, they raise up to be ungodly human being, many times your parents' fault. Especially inside the church, if your child somehow, you know, rejects Jesus Christ for all their life, and you didn't do anything about it, man, you're going to be partly, you know, blamable. Yes. You didn't do your parents' duty, right? And even a saved child, if they turned out to be a wicked child because you didn't do your best, right. then it's your fault. Yes. Until they're 18, they're under your rules. Yes. You're the guardian. What have they seen in your life? They don't lose their salvation if they trusted Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, but they might have lost everything else. Right. And it stems a lot of times from your parents. Amen. You parents better be careful about your testimony, about how you live your Christian walk, because your children are watching you like a hawk. You know, ch children's best excuse, my parents does it. My parents don't do it. I mean, to me, that's a great excuse, though. Yes. I mean, God put your parents, you know, especially in a Christian family, where your parents don't read Bible, your parents don't pray, your parents don't do any public ministry, your parents don't like to preach the gospel, your parents don't like to, you know, show charity amongst each other, your parents, you know, don't leave anything according to the Word of God. Then as a child, you know, how are you going to grow up to be a good child right. of God? Right? I mean, some of them do. Again, but if you did your best as a, as a parent, then you have no, ex I mean, children have no excuse. You've done your job. Yes. I mean, just like inside a church, someone could have been listening to preaching after they got to save, you know, 10 years, same preaching, two people, person one, person two, but they turned out to be different. One becomes more faithful, one becomes more backslidden but they heard the same message, right? Then it's out of your control. You have to get to a point where you've done your best so that it's out of your control. 
or you could have that testimony, I've done my best. And then you're not ashamed in front of God because you've done your best. If you don't do your best, you know, there's going to be a lot of answering to do. Yes. That's why you have to realize that, you know what? We're not going to lose our salvation. My children, they're not going to lose salvation if they have accepted Christ as their, as their Lord and Savior. But my children can lose many, many things. Many, many things as a Christian if I'm not a good parent. If I'm not a godly Christian parent according to the word of God. God. And as I mentioned, next generation is so perverse, so wicked, because Bible-believing parents have become so wicked. I'm not talking about this, you know, unsafe parents out there. I'm not talking about these charismatic parents out there. No, I'm talking about Bible-believing parents have become so wicked in their own ways because of their pride, their stubbornness, because they think that they're so special, the children turn out to be as bad or wicked, usually. Amen. You know, next generation always turns out to be worse and worse and worse. Yes. And it's because of you, parents. Amen. Yeah. And then don't think that, oh, I don't have any children, so I'm okay. No. There are other people who's younger in your life who's looking at you. Yes. I mean, so don't think that just because you don't have a kid, you know, you're off the hook, right? Amen. You have a responsibility as an adult. And if you don't do your duties as an adult, then well, how do you expect next generation to stand up for truth, stand up for King James Bible, still go out, out there and preach the word and be moved by unrighteous things in the world? If you're not, They'll never. They'll just get worse and worse and worse. So things that you can lose is your children, if you're parents. You could lose your children to the devil, if you're parents. And the last, I think, most heartbreaking thing for a parent, as a Bible-believing parent, to experience is to see your child who grew up inside the church, and you lose them to the devil. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's like, you know, the words can describe the pain and torment a parent have to go through. Has to go through because you've done everything that you can, hopefully, but they still turn out to give up their life to the devil. But, I mean, those are really, really, you know, heartbreaking cases. But if you haven't done it, if you haven't done your best to raise up your child, as a godly man and woman, boy and girl, then it's on you. Don't go crying out to your mama, you know, years later, man, my, my kid, you know, dad, mom, you know, my kid, they turned out to be so bad. They grew up in a Bible-believing church. What happened? If your parents are honest with you, they'll point at you. It's because of you, son. It's because of you, daughter. Look how you live your Christian life. I never seen you talk about Word of God. I never seen you pray. I never seen you go out street preaching. I never seen you preach the gospel. I never seen you even stand up for what's right in front of unrighteousness. How do you expect your children to grow up after they leave, you know, your nest to be a Bible-believing Christian, young man and woman? It doesn't work like that. God's fair. If you don't give your effort, you're, you're going to lose your children. Simple as that. Don't think that children who are sitting here will stay after they're able to be independent. Many of them will just go their own way. Yes. I know how to live on my own. I'm getting my own paycheck. I could date whoever I want. My parents can't stop me. Pastor can't stop me. Nobody can stop me. And what happens to those people, right? Gossip, fornicate, bring bad testimony to their own family. Yes. And they get to a point where, you know what? I'm saved. I'm okay. I'm just going to live my life like this. Forget about Bible-believing church. 
Forget it. That's what happens. That's what's going to happen to your children. You're going to lose your children, parents. You're going to lose your children, leaders, if you do not get right. If you don't get right with the Lord, if you don't see the significance of your own Christian walk, you don't look at your own testimony, you don't look at your own prayer life, if you don't look at your own love for lost souls out there, then forget it. You are going to lose your children. And for the wrong reasons, because you haven't done your best. And as children, you're going to lose your parents. You don't do your best. If your parents are still Bible-believing Christians, godly parents, you're going to lose your parents. What does that mean? Your wicked ways will turn you away from the Word of God. Yes. Your wicked ways will turn you away from the ministry. Your wicked ways will be used by the devil. That's right. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I lost my relationship with my parents. You know, they don't love me anymore. And then they look at you and, oh, you're living like the devil, right? Amen. You're not a follower of Christ. You're a follower of the devil. It's a... Uh, how, how should I say? It's a cycle that's happening continuously over and over. And if you're here right now and if you're listening, you actually have a chance to right the ship, as they say. You have a chance to correct your past. You have a chance to get things right. Amen. And it's God giving you a chance. Yes. God's giving you and me a chance to get right. Amen. Because how much more do you want to lose as a Christian? One of the worst feelings is that whatever you work for, you lose it True. in an instant. Yes. Just simple. So one time I was working some work for, some stuff for my work. You know, they have Excel, right? Spreadsheet. Working on it for a few hours. Computer crashes. I didn't save it. There goes my work for a few hours. I have to start all over again. Man, I feel like I'm cheated. I'm mad at myself for not saving it. I hate the computer, you know. I'm like, why did this happen? And you try to, you know, replicate each step that you did to get to the final product that you were happy with. It takes longer. I mean, it takes more effort. That's what's going to happen to you. Yes. Man, everything that you've worked for, like we read in 2 John, verse 8, you could just lose it in an instant. Yes. You could just lose it. And as a Bible-believing Christian, it's very easy to lose it. And once you lose it, man, when people look at you, you look like a broken record. Oh, what does that mean? Broken record. If you live long enough, but if you like vintage stuff, you know what record player is, right? Imagine a record player that keeps skipping and repeating the same line over and over and over. Man, that gets super annoying. Yes. And it becomes screechy, right? You hear that screeching sound. This is what happens to you. When you consistently make the same mistake and don't get right with the Lord, you're going to be stuck at that place, and you're going to keep on losing. When the record should be turning to produce a beautiful sound, right? It's not turning. It's, it's stuck. It tries to go, it goes back. It tries to go, it goes back. It's like those clocks, right? When battery is almost gone, it just... Stops at that second, you know, goes up yes. to six, goes back to five, six and five, six and five. Unreliable. You can trust it. And as a Christian, if you're not going to get right with the Lord, you're going to become a broken record player. Yes. Because you're still going to do the same mistake over and over right. and over. Then what can you if you lose your children as a parent, and what else can you lose as a Christian? Number two, you can lose balance as a Christian. 
and we feel loose balance as a Christian, it's over. It's over. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Think about it. Are you keeping good balance, right balance, as a Christian right now? Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When you're out of balance, what happens? You can't walk straight you know, when it comes to physical sense. And when you see a balance and when it's out of balance, the bottom can't see the top. And what happens in your Christian walk is that because you're backslidden, because you're not living right, your balance has gone so what happens is false balance. Yes. When it comes to false balance, then you don't have right relationship with God. So sin has control over your life. Amen. There shouldn't be sin controlling your life in order to have a right balance. Right. But once you let sin take over, what happens? You know, the balance goes towards the sin. We preach this all the time. You have to confess your sins on a daily basis. You have to examine yourself on a daily basis. Yes. But if you don't get right with the Lord on a daily basis, what happens? You have a broken fellowship with the Lord, which causes false balance. Right. When something's not in right balance, what happens? Things don't go the right way. Driving. If you don't have a right wheel balance, what happens? It doesn't go straight. It steers wrong way. And it could cause big accidents. And when you look at your Christian walk, you always have to think about, you have to think about living a balanced Christian life. Are you spending right amount of time in the Word of God? Are you spending right amount of time in prayer? Are you spending right amount of time in public ministry? Are you spending right amount of time in the ministry? And also, you know, we don't want anybody who says, you know what, God, I read your Bible 10 hours a day. Where's food? You don't work. <laughs> you have to have the same balance. You have to do your best outside as well. You have to labor. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. If you have a job, you have to do your job to make a living as well. So you have to be balanced spiritually. Right? right? As well as the things that you do in the world. Yes. You can't be all spiritual. You can't be all ministry unless you've been, you're like a full-time missionary, you know, full-time pastor. I mean, you have to do other things in life. Why? Because that's your testimony. When you have false balance, you're going to lose your testimony. Right. Once and for all. And just like that broken record, once you lose that testimony, you can't get it back. It's like uh, our glass right there, you know, over there, like a stained glass window. If someone breaks it, what happens? It loses the beauty. You could try to piece it together with super glue or whatnot. It's not going to look the same. No. Once it's broken, the beauty and integrity of the window is lost. Yes. Once you have false balance, your beauty and integrity is lost. Your testimony is gone. That's why don't break it in the first place. Amen. Then why do you always want to break it first? And then you want to reattach it and show that I'm good now. Ah, no, no, I still see all these marks. Yes. It's like a broken vessel. You know, like you break it, you're like, ah, it's just one time mistake. It's just one time fornicating. It's just one time gossiping. You know, it's one time, you know, being drunk. You know, we'll just put it back. It's never the same. No. Do you know how many people could have been saved, aren't saved because of your actions, Christians? You might be good now. You're trying to witness to them left and right now. Maybe if it's your family. But after you got saved, 
they saw you break that glass. Right. Once you break that glass, some of them you can never, ever piece it together. No. That's why false balance is very dangerous. If you're not keeping good testimony, you better check your testimony. And in front of the people, do I behave the same way as I behave inside the church? Great. Am I only godly inside the church in this walls or am I the same outside the church that's your measure you're like how do I measure because inside the church I don't hear you cuss inside the church I don't hear you do I mean talk about some dirty jokes inside the church right I don't see you go out there and steal I don't see you you know harm other brethren but outside the church what do you do inside the church you pray when we pray inside the church you know, you listen to the gospel, you listen to preaching, you know, you read the verses, but outside the church, do you do the same? If you don't, then you don't have good testimony. Right. You have false balance. Maybe because God has enough grace and mercy on you, maybe the stained glass hasn't been broken yet. But sooner or later, it's going to break. You know, devil is throwing and throwing and throwing. Yes. But because of God's grace, it's just missing by inches, by centimeters, by millimeters. But if Lord goes, you know what? You've had enough chances, son. You had enough chances, daughter. That's it. No more. And then he breaks. Oof. I don't know about you. You know, if you, know, if you drop a glass, you know, while you're washing dishes yes. on the floor, it makes a lot of mess. And it takes a while to clean it up if it's a big glass, right? And you want to pick up every little fragment of the glass because if you step on it, you, you, get, you bleed or you get hurt. Yes. Once you break that glass and once you lose that testimony, you have to pick up every part. And a lot of times you've got to miss some of the parts. And those parts will hurt someone forever until you go to heaven for all your life. Can you believe it? Because of your false balance, because you broke that glass, because you have a bad testimony, it's going to affect somebody, some brother or sister or unsafe people for the rest of their life. It will hurt them for the rest of their life. And unless they talk to you about it, you may never know. You will know at the judgment seat of Christ, if you're safe. And you have to answer to God, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, why you messed up your testimony. Why you hurt people for so many years. Your excuse can't be, Lord, I didn't know. You knew when you're doing those actions. Don't give that excuse. Oh, yeah, you know, when I broke the glass, I didn't know. You knew. Everybody knows. Yes. You know what you're doing, right? Amen. Especially if you're not a little baby. Right. You know, if you know what's right and wrong, you got to do it. I mean, if you have, I mean, if you have knowledge of good and evil, you got to do it. Yes. Right? You're not, I mean, no excuses. You're going to lose your balance. You're going to lose testimony. And what else are you going to lose? You're going to lose your sanity as a Bible-believing Christian. What does that mean? You can't see it clearly anymore. You have blinded your own self. That's why when people try to split the church and leave the church and gossip and stuff, they lose their sanity. From a plain person's view, from outside, you look at it, you're like, how can they be so arrogant? How can they be so stubborn? How can they be so stupid? How can they, you know, act like that? Why? Because they have false balance and they have lost their sanity. They can't see it right anymore. It's on them. Bible clearly says do this and do that, but they start flipping it. You know, black becomes white, white becomes black, and everything's great to them. And you're like, hmm. That's why Christians go crazy. Yes. And 
many times, if not all the time, they're bringing it to themselves. They lost their balance. You know, when your brain loses chemical balance, what happens? You lose sanity. You become crazy. You're not normal anymore. And Bible-believing Christians become abnormal. They lose their sanity. They're not the same. They don't get wisdom from God anymore. They could still try to increase their knowledge just by reading the Word of God, but God's not going to bless it anymore, right? Your heart is already tainted. It's already black. So what happens? You know, when balance is wrong and you keep on feeding the wrong things, this becomes heavier and heavier, so you can't even feel the other side. You can't even feel spiritual stuff anymore. So that's why some of you who's listening or who's here, if you're at that state, nothing really touches you anymore. Very dangerous. Yes. I mean, for some brothers, they're like, man, I, I needed that preaching. Lord, you spoke to me. Man, I, needed, I really needed to get right with you. And thank you for that message. But for some, they're like, ah, another same old message, another Sunday message. Why? Because your balance is an abomination right now. You can't feel anything spiritual anymore. And when you're so unbalanced, what happens? All you're thinking about is things of the world, the flesh and the devil. And then you're happy when you succeed in the world. But when you hear some souls get saved, like meh, you know. I mean, like, ah, it's all right. Yeah. Our church is good at winning souls. So that's it. I'm like, uh, I'm reading the Word of God. Yeah, I do my three chapters so that I could get signed off. You know, that's it. Nothing touches me anymore. You know, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, they have their own life. I don't care. I mean, literally, you become spiritual zombies, right? Yes. But you're a Bible believer. Right. You're a Bible believing spiritual zombies? It doesn't even make sense. It's like, you know, that's like the oxymoron at its best, right? I mean, you should be most spiritually, you know, alert, active. But you're not because you have false balance. You lost everything. You lost your testimony. You lost your sanity. You lost your joy. Without the right balance, you're not going to have joy. That's why some of you are, you might be smiling here to save your face. But outside of church, you might be just Debbie Downer, pouting, hating life all the time. Some of you show it here, so which is worse, right? <laughs> I don't see you being joyful outside of church if you can't even be joyful inside of church, right? Think about it. When was the last time you were really joyful in the Lord? The Bible says rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. You can't be rejoicing in the Lord if you don't have right balance. Having right balance means that you're telling God, God, you know, I put you as my priority. Your word still touches me. Praying touches me. Lost souls out there touches me. It shows you that you're still alive. Yes. But if you have false balance, you're going to start feeling like you're not alive spiritually. If you haven't been already dead, you know, preach the message before, like dead Christians, right? Yes. You might already be a dead Christian. CPR ain't going to help you anymore. But... With man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Thank God that you still have opportunity to get right. Yes. Unlike what the judicial system or other false religion says, you're done. Some religion goes, oh, yeah, if you, you know, denounce us, you can never come back. You're excommunicated forever. You know? No. Our God is God of many chances. Amen. As long as you're breathing, as long as you have Another day to live, God's giving you another chance to get right. Bless God. Stop losing things, right? Yes. Stop losing over and over and over. It's time for you 
to get right, it's time for you to understand that each day, me being out of balance, I'm losing more and more. And that includes rewards, right? Your rewards in heaven. Many of you may be built up a lot of rewards because you have first love. But because of first balance, a false balance, you lost your first love as well. And all the things that you built up for the Lord, you're losing it little by little. And for some of you, your first five years of, you know, Christian walk was the best it's ever going to be. And next five and ten has drained you of all the rewards in heaven because of your sinful ways, because of your false balance Christian life. Think about it. We don't live for rewards, right? We live to please the Lord. Yes. We live to glorify God. Amen. But rewards comes with it because God is fair God, right? Yes. If you don't live for the Lord, why should he give you the same reward in heaven as someone who lived like the devil? Right. That's not a fair God, but God's fair. So as Christians, think about it. Where are you standing when it comes to balance in your Christian walk? Are you living a balanced Christian life? Or is it little tilted where you could correct it, you know, with few tweaks? Or is it really out of balance where you really have to get right with the Lord? Where you really have to spend not just a minute or two, but maybe hours on your knees yes. getting right with the Lord? Yes. Let, letting yourself out to the Lord, confessing all your sins, asking the Holy Spirit to help you remember those sins that you haven't confessed, right? Help us. And really getting right with the Lord. Amen. Are you at that stage? Then you better get right with the Lord. Do not let this day go by before you getting right with the Lord. Because false balance will never, ever correct itself. That's right. You have to do it. Yes. Not me. Not your mom or dad, grandma, grandpa. Not your wife or husband. Not your children. You have to get that balance corrected. It's up Amen. to you. You don't lose your soul, praise the Lord, if you trust that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Yes. But everything else, you can lose. How much more will you lose? Or are you going to get right with the Lord? Let's pray. Yes.